What is going on everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here. And before I get into this video where I preview the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Cincinnati Bengals week number four matchup, there's a couple of things I want to get out of the way first. First of all, I know I was not able to put out a Jacksonville Jaguars versus Miami Dolphins recap position grade and players of the week video. And let me make that clear that it wasn't because I was like super pissed off at the Jaguars. It wasn't because, you know, I was enraged or anything like that. Um, the way that my schedule works, it's hard for me to really put out videos um, without them being on my days off. So I took Thursday off to watch the Jaguars play, and then after that I had to work Friday, had to work Saturday, and you know now Sunday, Monday, and Sunday I was watching the Jags play, and by Sunday, you know, you don't really want to hear about the week three loss that we had to the Dolphins, so I figured, you know, I'm just going to skip over that recap, and you know, Thursday nights are, they, it was a hard game to kind of, you know, build around my video schedule, so I really do apologize about that. Um, but we are going to be back to the regular and normal video schedule that you guys are used to having here on Treep Talks now that the Jaguars have Sunday games from here on out. And one last thing before we dive into this preview video, I want to give a big shout out to my guy, Christopher Columbus. Hey, Cam, Christopher Columbus got married this weekend. Oh, what a guy. Uh, Christopher Columbus. What a guy. Got engaged this weekend, and we are very excited for him, very happy for him. Very, and, very happy. And he's one of the OG subscribers. He was, subs like, subscribed to me since I had about 60 of those motherfuckers. So, big congratulations to him. Everybody flood the comments section with congratulations to Christopher Columbus. But without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to dive into the week number four preview of the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Cincinnati Bengals. And this is a game that is either going to put us back on track or really bring us back to reality so without further ado ladies and gentlemen this is the jacksonville jaguars versus cincinnati Bengals, week number four preview now prior to the dolphins game the Bengals played the browns right and the browns beat the Bengals, and the jags were a team that could beat the browns the Jags came off a loss against the Titans, and the Titans were a good team, and the Jags were about to play the Dolphins, and we really thought we were a good team after losing to the Dolphins, I mean, after losing to the Titans and beating the Colts, right? Then we go on Thursday Night Football, and it was abysmal, abysmal football, right? Not the Jaguar football team that we were, you know, expecting to see. But the Jags seem to do this to us every year. Either they let us down right off the bat, or they give us some kind of sense of optimism in week one, week two, but then by week three, four, five, you know, it's downhill from there, and there isn't much to root for. Now, is this not the perfect storyline for Joe Burrow right now? Joe Burrow is going to be coming into this game 0-2-1. Oh, so he has a tie... And he has two losses. Do you really think Joe Burrow is going to lose to us? Like, no. There's no way. Joe Burrow, I think this is almost like a guaranteed fact. Like, this is set up perfectly for Joe Burrow to get his first NFL victory against the Jacksonville Jaguars. But let's talk about it here. Joe Burrow is a good NFL quarterback. He looks really good, and I'm really excited for this kid's future. I really am. I think Joe Burrow is going to be a very exciting quarterback. You know, when he came out in the draft, I didn't really focus on him too much because, you know, I knew the Jags weren't going to get him, but I did watch a lot of him at LSU. Uh, one of my really good friends, Jason Taylor, who's done a couple of videos with me here on the channel, is a big LSU fan, and he would always hype up Joe Burrow and, you know, what he was able to do. And I like watching SEC football, so clearly I've seen what he did at a college level. And he played really, really good. And, you know, it's 50-50 how those guys are going to translate into the NFL. I had a feeling Joe Burrow was going to be good from the jump, but he needed some, you know, he needed some people around him in order to do that. And... I think he has some people. He has some weapons around him in Cincinnati. They just need to consens consistently, you know, be weapons, consistently be useful for Joe Burrow. And, you know, he's going to be a good quarterback. I mean, he threw the ball 61 times on his Thursday night game against Cleveland. Unfortunately, you know, there were some drops and everything else sprinkled in there. You know, there's, a, there's some comparison, you know, between Burrow and Minshew. I mean, Minshew, I think, is a great quarterback. 
there's just times in games where, you know, these receivers or these offensive linemen, you know, they really need to bail him out or they really need to help him out here. Like Chris Conley on Thursday night. I mean, Chris Conley's been a big topic of discussion this week. I mean, his three drops were drive killers this week. This is a man that is a captain, you know, and the Jaguars had to play without DJ Chark last week. And DJ Chark, you know, you could tell. You could freaking tell that the Jaguars miss DJ Chark really bad, right? You could really tell. And, you know, these targets are still there. I mean, you got LaVisca Chenault, who I still think is going to be a dog. You know, they, they, the kid's way too versatile for him not to be an all-around great player. And, you know, if Chark isn't playing again, you know, look for him to be another big part of what the Jaguars are going to try to do on the offensive side of the football. But as far as everybody else, you know, Keelan Cole and Chris Conley. Keelan Cole played a good part, but, you know, Chris Conley, you know, he needs to step up. And Gardner Minshew, man, he did not look great against the Dolphins. Simple as that. The lights were on. He didn't look great. Gardner Minshew needs to be able to take shots down the field. He can't play scared. He played a little scared last week. I mean, that's something that you didn't really ever see from Gardner Minshew last season. You know, Minshew didn't have a lot to lose. He was throwing the ball deep down the field. And, you know, maybe right now he feels the pressure. You know, the pressure might be on for Gardner Minshew. He's playing a little scared now. This game, you know, you can't play scared. The division right now is still kind of tight to the point where, you know, the Jags can still kind of trickle their way up there. Tennessee, obviously, you know, has the lead, but, you know, how how long is that going to last? We'll see. But the Jags are still in a position right now where they could, you know, climb their way back and maybe make a comeback here. And it starts with a game against a team like the Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals are not a bad football team at all. They have some proven guys on their defensive line that this offensive line is going to have to protect. And this offensive line, you know, week in and week out, they've allowed some sacks, but I still think that they are playing way better football than they did a year ago, including in the Miami game, even though I think Miami was the worst game that they have played so far. But they're doing things in the run game that we haven't seen in three, four years. You know, opening up holes for the running back to run through. And James Robinson is going to be another crucial, crucial piece for this Jaguars victory, James Robinson needs to run the ball hard and run it often. I mean, you look at Cleveland, they beat Cincinnati because they were able to run the ball really well. You know, look for Visca Chenault, James Robinson to be, you know, really highlight reels of this offense running the football and making sure that that's, you know, kind of a centerpiece of this game plan going up against uh, Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals. Also, you know, a big thing this week receive the ball like I mean I know I know that uh it's it's been a it's been a big topic of discussion but you know if you win the coin toss receive the ball also dominate time of possession make sure you have the ball for a long time like that's we've been getting fucked on time of possession every single game that we have played this season and you don't want to give Joe Burrow you know time to make plays because this kid's a playmaker this kid's a star and he will end up finding a way to beat you, especially with this Jaguars defense going up against this offense. So, dominating the time of possession, making sure you establish the run game, I think is the biggest key to victory for the Jacksonville Jaguar offense going up against the Cincinnati defense. Especially if the Jags don't have DJ Chark. And if, you know, Gardner's going to have to throw the ball, Gardner can't play scared, you know, just keep doing what you're doing, Gardner. Like I said, I mean, find the open guy and figure out where you're going with the football, but you can't play scared, bro. you got to go down the field. you got to make these plays. you got to do some Minshew Mania-esque things to make sure you help this team win. That's still, you know, your your motive. Like, you still got to do that. Now, as far as this defense goes, I mean, I hope so. <laughs> you know, I hope, I hope they play well. Giovanni Menard and Joe Mixon have been really stepping up the last two weeks. Um... And the Jags' run defense has been looking really good. And I think that uh, that that shouldn't be a problem. I think stopping the run should be, you know, should be something that the Jaguars continue to do well. I think that should be a no-brainer. But this is also going to be probably the worst offensive line that the Jaguars have faced so far. So hopefully this pass rush can actually get to Joe Burrow. I mean, you've seen it with Philadelphia. Philadelphia was all up in Joe Burrow's face, like, for most of the game. So... 
you're going to have to find a way to get into Joe Burrow's face, interrupt some throws, make sure he makes some rookie mistakes there. Because, you know, you're going to have, I think, C.J. Henderson on A.J. Green. You know, Trey Herndon, gross, gross, gross. You know, all these guys in the secondary, man, it's just, it is not fun. It is disgusting. And, you know, I, I said it a couple of times before the season even started. I was like, guys, the secondary is going to be outmatched almost each and every week. And this Cincinnati game is no different. The Jags are going to be outmatched. And, you know, if Joe Burrow has another just amazing, just downright crazy game, this could be the last game of Todd Wash's career. So, maybe in a sense, the Jags defense should play bad again. I don't know. But in order for them to win, the pass rush needs to be there. And hopefully, hopefully they bring more than four. Because not bringing more than four has cost the Jaguars. I mean, when they bring five, I mean, they get to the quarterback. I mean, I think it might just be because, you know, the offensive line might just be shocked because the Jaguars just don't do that. But, I mean, it's not a mistake. I mean, you're getting after the quarterback when you're bringing blitzes, when you're bringing pressure. I mean, you just, it, this defensive line isn't good enough to just bring four. And the secondary isn't good enough to cover that long. Time and time again, you see on Twitter, and time and time again, people try to explain that this is not the 2017 Jaguar defense, and Todd Wash struggles, struggles to understand that you have some young, talented guys there, don't get me wrong. I mean, Clay LeVon, Chase Son, Josh Allen, C.J. Henderson. I mean, you got some guys back there, Miles Jack, Joe Schobert as leaders, but, I mean, it's just not, it's not it, dude, man. You gotta, you gotta come to that realization. You gotta bring some pressure and you got to do some things to help these guys out because if not, they're going to get eight and up each and every week. Each and every week, and it's going to be embarrassing. But if I had to throw out a prediction to y'all, I'm going to say the Cincinnati Bengals defeat the Jacksonville Jaguars. And, um, yeah, this is the now second time that I have predicted against the Jaguars. Or the third, yeah, the second time. Yeah, second time, so... If everything went my way right now, we'd be 2-2, two and two, I believe. And I think we, we have an opportunity right now to go 2-2. Two and two. So, let's try it. <laughs> you know, not by 2-2 two and two with us losing, but, you know, 2-2 two and two in real life. Let's get the victory, and let's let's see what happens. Let's beat Joe Burrow. You know, let's, let's have his first victory not be against the Jaguars. Because, you know, that's going to just be everywhere. Joe Burrow gets his first victory against Minshew Mania and the Jaguars. Joe Burrow, first victory against... Minshew Jaguars, you know, it's going to be everywhere, so let's do everything we can to prevent that, and I hope you enjoy watching the game, make sure you stay tuned for our weekly picks coming up, I almost blanked there, our weekly picks coming up on Tuesday, or on Wednesday, and thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure if you haven't already, you can check all the links down below. You can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Instagram, at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel three days a week. Ain't nobody outworking me. Them just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.